Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Brav Bros, your favorite podcast from the bros for everybody. For whoever wants to listen, I am your co-host, Steel Russell, joined, as always, by the one and only Skeeter McGeeter. What's up, Skeets? Skeeter McGeeter. All right. Every every time somebody says Skeeter, I think about Doug Funny. Um, I, I had a pretty uneventful week. I mean, I'm tired. I'm going away this weekend. You had a very eventful early week. Yeah. It's... Saving a dog. Yeah. Tell it us was... about that, Steele. <laughs> was... Okay. On the road was a dog. It was like a little, maybe 10-pound dog. One very big. Okay. And I get out of the car, and I think it's just like somebody's dog that has wandered into the street. When I find the dog, or when I get close to the dog, the first thing I notice is the smell. And this poor dog has clearly not been groomed in over a year. It's too small to be a stray. It's not like, you know, you see a stray, like, roaming around. You're like, oh, it's a stray dog. Like, this is somebody's dog. I've never seen a stray dog roaming around. Oh, no? Ever. Well, I have. Is that a Texas thing? Maybe. Okay. But then you got to you gotta be careful because it might be a coyote, and then they'll get uh, Yeah, that's a good point. But yeah. so I see this dog, and I noticed that it was it was so... So sad. Like the ears were completely caked over with earwax to the point that the dog could barely hear. It had a cut on its head. It was disheveled. It had been so neglected and mistreated. So it was also, it was hot as balls. It was like 95 degrees. It was on the blacktop. It was panting so hard and like stumbling around. It looked like it was about to die. So I grabbed a towel out of my truck and scooped it up. So I get back to my house and we are calling everybody I know. Like literally, like anybody that has any experience with dogs or rescuing animals, what I have learned, it is not easy to rescue a dog right? at all. So we end up going to the Plymouth Animal Hospital, which if you're in the area and you need a vet, do not go to this place. Okay. I am telling you not to go well, to the Plymouth Animal Hospital. It was going to be a good hospital. plug. It's a bad no. plug. Terrible plug. The vet was disinterested. He honestly was like leaning towards like just put this animal down. Yeah, we call this a butt plug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> butt plug, which means it's a negative plug. But it was a terrible experience there, but it turned out that the dog was chipped. The owner didn't even take the time to register the chip, so the dog was unaccounted for, which was actually a positive thing because it let us legally be allowed to take care of the dog. So okay. now the vet gives the dog all its shots. It gives it a dewormer, and she hooked it all up with an animal hospital in the area. We took the dog there to get actual treatment to try to recover. I mean, it's it's a very long road to recovery. It's been years, maybe over two years that this dog has been groomed. Like, its nails wrapped around its paws. Ugh. It was the saddest thing I've ever seen. It was so sweet. Like, it let the vet kind of just do whatever it had to do. It was not fighting at all. It also didn't have any energy to fight. It was one of the saddest, most like heartbreaking things that I have ever experienced. I felt so bad for this dog, but we got it the care it needed. It's in the hospital recovering right now, so hopefully it bounces back. It's an elderly dog. It's got a long road to recovery, so we named it Reba. Reba McIntyre? So everyone say your prayers for Reba. She is fighting for her life because of some horrible, horrible dog owner. And T's and P's for Reba. D's and P's for Reba, but that, oh, yeah, that was well, my week. That, that's, let's go on a lighter note here. Barbenheimer is back, <laughs> all right? We had the live show last week, so we got a little distracted, but we did get a couple of applications, and uh, I mean, I'm going away this weekend, but after that, I think we're on, fully on, all in, because I need to see these fucking movies at I need this point. To, I can't. Yeah, I need to remind our audience, if you are listening and you want to partake in the Barbenheimer, there's been some very, very good applications. There's been actual PDF files that have been oh, made. Oh, yeah. There was, there was a full PDF file resume, which was awesome. That one's at the top for me. And again, I get to pick three, and then Shooter gets to pick out of those three. Anybody can apply. Gender does not matter. Apply, but I need you to, one, say why you want to see the Barbenheimer double premiere. Two, what gift are you going to bring Shooter? And three, why do you deserve to go? Was that it? I think that was I pretty much that it. Was That's, pretty the much it. That's the we, gist of it. We got some applications from all over the place. Uh, shout out Australia. I would love to go to Australia to go see Barbenheimer. Uh, just can't swing it. Yeah, Definitely that, just can't <laughs> swing it, but I appreciate it. You can still send your applications oh, in, but yeah. if you are in a different location, you have to intro the entire thing with I'm not in the area because it, it is a, an important distinction. So Yeah, I think, honestly, the furthest I'm willing to travel on this one is... I don't know. Should I be nice about it in like a couple of states here or there? You're going to drive a cut. No, no, certainly no. not going to drive anywhere. I'm no. going to fly. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Driving for shit. This person, unless it's like a really cool area. If someone's in like LA, 
That would might be a cool trip. Fuck LA. That's a long trip. <laughs> LA sucks too. Yeah. yeah. No, you know, you have you have to come here. All you right, have to fine. come to shooter. I, oh, that was the whole thing because Oppenheimer with the, the IMAX. Correct King IMAX. Of Prussia. Yeah, 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 okay. All right. It yeah, has so. to be King of Prussia. So if you can't make it to King of Prussia, just intro it with that. We'll still read it because these applications are absolute gold. Yeah. I'm actually gonna tomorrow morning I I, I real work. Um I have a meeting. After my meeting, I'm gonna start responding to a couple. Just let you know let, let you guys know that we're reading them. And that you're in the running. We'll respond, let you know that you're in the running. We appreciate the application. It'll be nicer than when you apply for a job because you know there's like Jerry like generic bullshit. Like the Jerry, you. Yeah, I was gonna Jerry say geriatric, um, which is also geriatric because it's probably an old white man reading this anyway. So, um, <laughs> anyway, let's uh, yeah. So I'll respond to a couple tomorrow, and uh, you know, just let you know you're on the running. But that takes us to the news of the week, and uh, we have one that I can't wait to get to because it got a lot of traction on uh, our socials, and for good reason. But we're gonna start out with um, a bomb that you dropped when you walked into my house. I had no idea that. Apparently they are postponing the apparently they're postponing the ultimate girls trip involving Caroline Manzo and Brandy Glanville due to legal reasons. They're still trying to get that whole thing sorted out. So they pushed Roni Legacy to the front. So we get to see the ladies of Roni come back to the screen. Now I have one question. Do you think the return of the original cast while Roni the reboot is currently airing? Well, it won't be currently airing, so it's not. It doesn't drop until December. Okay, all right, because so that was my Roni, only. Concern. Yeah, the current Roni will be far done by then, uh, and then the plan is supposedly that they're going to air the Morocco one, which is the one with uh, Caroline and Brandy, at some point in 2024. Details unclear. They pushed it all the way to they, next they, year. Yeah, they pushed it to yeah, but barring they, Bethany Frankel's union strike. But this is honestly my first reaction was this is a huge, huge year for Sonia and Luann. They're making the waves, man, and like you know what rightfully so crappy lake is a hit i love crappy lake it's the perfect like little snack in between the housewife yeah. shows so i can't tell if it's honestly because i mean we see a lot of this especially with the new roni on where people are just not watching because they refuse to accept new people into their lives which is the dumbest thing in the world but i wonder if it was newer housewives if they threw them on something like this if it would get as much if it was exactly the same show and it was fun if they would get this much at least love. I don't want to say traction or views. I just want to say love because everything across the board is a resounding yes for Crappy Lake. What's really funny is I firmly believe that because of the anti Roni reboot people, the people that weren't even watching the last season of the mm. old cast, the people that gave up on it but are still dying on this hill of bring back the OGs, I think Roni Legacy is going to get massive numbers just because of those kinds of people where they're like oh we're watching the ogs we're supporting our cast yeah and i'm okay with that because i, I am too I, that's exactly the role that we want them in that's what we talk about you want people to kind of ride off into the sunset give them this one last show let them have a nice fun trip give us six episodes not 10 please not 10 just six episodes give us a couple episodes here and there we'll enjoy it and then that's it and we're good and we're done can i emphasize that that's it yes i do not need I'm All okay with people. Sonia and Luann going to a different crappy oh, lake. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. What I don't want is for petitions to start for bringing back the OG cast to Roni. This is a one and done. They deserve it. They've earned it. Let them ride off with some respect. Have a really good last hurrah. Bring them back for a couple of Ultimate Girls trip along the way. Some more crappy lakes with Sonia and Luann for sure. But let's not get crazy with this. Yeah, I mean, I actually couldn't be more ecstatic about the Morocco trip thing getting pushed back, though. Me too. I don't want to watch I that. I did not care about no. any of that. At least Roni Legacy has some substance to it, and people are going to be excited about it. I hope it's good. And that's the thing. When we talk about how much we like the new Roni, it doesn't mean that we dislike it. We just know that it's time for them to move on. That's We seriously. appreciate what they did. We respect it. We want to give them one last hurrah. It's going to be fun. Obviously, we're going to see these women on different shows popping up here and there, but I don't want them as a mainstay character. I don't want all of them together in New York. That's what fell apart in the first place. So let them go off, and we're good. No shade thrown their way. Well said, Shoots. Well said. Moving on from that, we got the return of Roslick. Happy birthday to me, September 5th, which reminds me, remember the Jameis Winston interview after he won the national championship? They're like, how do you feel about I remember, it? I remember a lot of Jameis Winston interviews, but not <laughs> that one. They're, they're all imprinted in my head because I think they're the greatest interviews ever. But they, the reporter, I think it was Aaron Andrews, was like, how do you feel? It's your birthday. You won the national champion. He goes, it's the greatest. 
happy birthday. And he just walked away. That was it. That was the whole interview. It's actually a pretty good interview for Jameis, honestly. <laughs> it was just, I love his interviews. Weird but dude. I need to ask, with Roslick's return, do you think it has the legs to stand on without Jen Shaw? I don't think so, honestly. I think that, I really yeah, don't. I, I mean, we saw how that looked last year with even with Jen in the picture. It was it was Heather's a tough year. It was a tough black year. eye taking stage, and it's so it's really funny because a lot of these shows, at least in like the year that we've been doing this, they've been dragging on. And as of late, everything's been pretty good. I've enjoyed the OC shows recently. Aside, yeah, but yeah, everything else has been pretty good, and. I remember Beverly Hills stinking, but I'm excited for Beverly Hills to come I am back. Too. I remember Jersey, even though Jersey was just on the air. I remember us being over everything. I'm still going to be excited for Jersey to yep. come back next year because I want to see what it looks like. Salt Lake City's not that. It, it it was boring and it stuck with me, and I was really annoyed by it. And I'm not excited for it to come back within a month. You know why? I think I know why. Why? Star power? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Partly, I don't really have it. Yeah. Honestly, partly. I think a big part of it, you know, because I love Lisa Barlow. I think she's really entertaining. Meredith, for what it's worth, like, look, she's she's funny at times. She, I get why she's on the screen. The overproduction and the overpushing of that stupid black eye and making that the center point of the season when you had a layup with Jen Shaw in her case was just banana land. That was, I don't even blame the cast. That is just a production fumble. Bravo yeah. just fumbled the bag. They had it. I mean, that's the easiest win. I think it would make a lot more sense if last season was purely about the Jen Shaw thing. Yes. And then we expected, okay, let's see what this looks like. We'll give them a season to kind of figure it out. And if this season sucked, we would still give them a little grace and say, all right, maybe they figured it out and they had a bad season. They'll come back the next season. That's sports analogies. But this is different. When you had that layup there... And you leaned into a dumb storyline that nobody cared about. And we didn't even get any specifics on. We still don't know what the fuck happened. I, yeah. And we don't care anymore. It's over. You fumbled the bag during a good pivotal season. We just watched what happened with Scandaval. You could have done that with Jen Shaw and spilled these details and had everybody turn on her. Instead, you just leaned into this dumb storyline. You had your chance. If this season's not good and it doesn't start off good, we're going to tune out. I, I'm, I'm not you and I. I just mean like in general. No, just in know? general, the audience. Although no, maybe I, you and I. I firmly agree. And, you know, we'll obviously give it a fair shake. Salt Lake was one of my favorites. Yeah. You remember how excited I was for you to watch it? Mm-hmm. It was your first, like, go around with it. I'd been there since season one. I was stoked. And then it just, like, oof, it tanked hard. So I'm holding out hope that they can bring it back to what it used to be when it started out. It was entertaining. It was fun. I liked the cast. I am curious if we're going to get a Jen Shaw appearance from prison. I, I don't put anything I past Bravo anymore, but we'll see. We'll see. It's September 5th, which is my birthday. Happy birthday to me, but uh, we'll see if it's a good birthday present. And the last thing, we need to call attention to it. Like I said, got a lot of traction on the socials. I woke up in Wildwood. We had a lovely weekend. Me, Dev, my daughter, it was awesome. We did the boardwalk. We did the beach. It was exactly what we needed. And then I have to wake up and see this stupid fucking video of Len Hochstein proposing to the mistress on a cliffside wearing the dumbest fucking shoes you I have seen. figure out what sneakers they are? No. They're yeah, and they, so he, Somebody left a comment about the shoes on his actual post and we're like, these are the dumbest shoes I've ever seen in my life. He's like, these shoes are worth more than your life. Doesn't matter. Love guys like that. Yeah, exactly. I love dudes like that. Well, that's why I keep posting and I keep pushing hashtag micro Len because I think this guy is the smallest penis on the planet. Like, if you have to say stuff like that, these shoes cost more than you make in a year, that means your dick is about one centimeter long, one centimeter wide. It's a micro. He's a micro. Is that a square? He's got a square he's little, got a square he's dick. got a square micro penis. Yeah, and I want people to know that. But seriously, like watching that video, Gave me way too much outrage. I'm sitting there like trying to enjoy my coffee in the morning. I'm like, who is this guy? Who do you think you are? You're not even divorced yet, right? You're a scumbag. We watched you on the screen all season last year. Just be a fucking loser. Nothing about you screams like, this is what bugs me, okay? He's a fucking plastic surgeon. The way he walks around, you'd think he won the Nobel Prize in medicine. This guy's not special. You're a run-of-the-mill plastic surgeon. Plastic surgeons in Miami do feel that way. But I don't understand it. I really don't. You live in a fortress that makes you look like a drug dealer. You are trying to kick your wife and kids out of the house so you and your mistress, who's 21 years old, can move in there and get married. She's still married, too. 
This whole thing stinks. Did you he see his stinks. mom's comment? Yes. And now <laughs> she's on the payroll. I think she I think that Lenny Cash. Like we knew that was gonna happen though. But it's after we watched weird. last like, season, yeah. But here's my issue with that, honestly. The kids can see that. Also, why is Salt Lake coming back before Miami? Bring Miami back first. Bring Miami back first and God. Good run going. Put Miami out there That's on Bravo. Flip Salt Lake over to Peacock. Put OC somewhere in the dumpster somewhere. And we're good. And and kick Lenny off that goddamn cliff with the shoes and the socks. Did you see the socks? No. And this is my I tried not to. Here's my big problem is somebody commented on ours like it looks like he's about to go outside and like flip a burger. Don't disrespect dads like that. No. And, you know, if the dad look the dad look is one thing. The Lenny Hawks team look is I would have totally respected different. it if he had like new balances on with some That's tube what people socks. were saying. Like, At least sure. they're not new balances and I said don't disrespect new balances. No, like, new balances are good, especially if they get that like little light green tinge from yeah. cutting the lawn. That's perfect. <laughs> At least they're some oils from the burgers that you're flipping. Yeah. They're practical. Yep, makes sense what to he me. was wearing made him look like a 16-year-old skateboard kid that thinks he's cool and up with the times. You're not, buddy. It's giving Steve Buscemi, what's up, fellow cool kids? Yeah, All pretty right. much. That's it. I'm done with Lenny. I, I think he's the fucking worst. But that takes us to Rose and Thorn, and uh, I have two <laughs> really good ones, so I'm going to let you start. Okay, fair enough. I'm going to start off with my Rose here, because my, uh, my Thorn's going to be maybe a little bit of a tangent. Uh, this is actually, even though it ended pretty roughly, it was a good reminder Okay, like this that. Come from, this comes from uh, Al, O-W-L, that hurt. And she said, hey, bro, bros. Wait, wait, wait. I have a complaint. Owl. Owl, O-W-L. You said Al. <laughs> well, I, whatever. <laughs> owl, it, I get it. It's a pun, owl, that hurt, owl, whatever. Shut up. No, like an owl, like who? Who, that hurt. Hoot. Is it hoot or who? Hooters. No. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Read you ever see that meme? Yeah. Oh, whatever. Just read anyway. it. Anyway. Uh, hey, Bravo Bros, I have a complaint. Yous always like to say, go birds, and I don't hear enough go fills. It's a path to another red October, and Wawa is doing Schwarby season, so I like to support the fills. And then she ended it with, I know you're gross Eagles fans, which I, I'm not even going to get into that. Uh, I hate that comment. Yeah. I hate that comment. We, don't, we haven't said go fills in a while. We haven't said go fills in a while. Good reminder there, but we at the do same watch, time, we also uh, wear Phillies gear on here frequently. We do. And I, we watch. We are so a, mad about this comment. It's a nice reminder to say go fills sometimes. Go fills. But here's my thing. We have a text <laughs> chain where like, we literally talk. I think every day we are we, we all watch me, Shoots, and our buddy George all watch most Phillies games and text about them every day. Honestly, if you're watching on YouTube and you ever have a, a couple of people have complained why is Shooter looking at his watch so much. He checks the scores. A lot of times I'm checking the scores. Yeah, no, and then he tells me. Yeah, yeah. no, it's cool. But yeah, I don't know. I have, I have mixed I'm feelings. I'm okay with that. that. I thought it was a good reminder. And go Phils. I don't need it. It's patronizing and I don't care for it. Whatever. <laughs> uh, and my thorn is I am not even going to read the comments out loud. But you know fucking who who commented on our oh, video. Oh, that's my double rose, baby. Double rose double for you. Rose. Double thorn for me. Double rose. This person commented not once. Twice. But twice. Rattled much? In a couple of hours? Rattled much, Tamra? Tamra, Are judge? you rattled a Are little bit, Are you coming to our TikTok? You don't want this. You don't want this smoke. To tell us that you weren't even friends with Jen last oh, year and you Tamra. definitely didn't bring her on the show. Not to mention she didn't even comment on the fact that we said that she threw her under the bus. That's no. Oh, uh, let me. Do, here we go. Let, yeah, Steel will so read the I've actual got a comment. double, and uh, this is more of a thorn because the other one I can at least throw some respect to. So my thorn is from Tamara Judge herself, and she commented, "I did not bring up the cheating. Gita did. My advice to her was to be honest. Lie. Two. If you guys knew what you were talking about, you would know I did not bring Jen on the show, and I was not close with her a year prior to filming." That doesn't add up, Tamara, because the way you talk on the show is that you two have been close for years, that you used to hang out at the gym, that you were a part of her meeting Ryan. Now you're changing your story up, Tamara. What happened? You don't come to our world, to our realm, I, and lie to us. I think the funniest part about this whole thing, every single comment was in support of us saying, fuck OC, get it off the TV. It's just every single... I had to go through because I wanted to make sure that there was... I was looking for a couple of thorns in there. Obviously, I found hers. Every single comment was in support of what we were talking about when we said, this show stinks, Tamara's trying too hard, she's clearly lying, she sucks, she's a terrible friend, get them all off the screen, I don't care anymore. Every single comment was in support of us, and then you get Tamara, the one-two combo. The one-two punch, and the crazy thing is, we're watching this, dude. We're watching you lie on TV, and then you lied in our comments. You are the one that said that you two were friends prior. Yep. 
So why are you lying? It just doesn't make sense. You can't just, this is what our whole rant was about. You cannot make baseless claims and lie. That's just not how this works. There is evidence, there's facts, there's people watching, there's cameras everywhere. Yes, <laughs> like, what are you doing? But that takes me to my rose. And here's why this is a rose. And I give respect here. This is from Bethany Frankel. And we posted a video about her. And I want to clear something up. People kept throwing the word misogyny around and misogynist and all that. We had no issue with the fact that it was a woman eating crab legs. We believe anybody should eat whatever the fuck they want, whenever they want. That has nothing to do with it. I don't want to watch anybody eat, period. I definitely don't want to watch any human being eat crab legs on TikTok. Nobody. It has nothing to do with gender roles. So, and the second part of that is... Of course she's allowed to voice her opinion. We're not saying that. The people that took that dead serious, people like, you want to pause her account? It's like, do you think we have the power to do that? No. We're making a joke. It's satire. We're saying someone pause this woman's account. I don't want to see her eat crab legs. Meaning, we don't want to see anybody eat crab legs. Do you, honestly? Like, do you, our audience, want to watch a person? Do you want to watch me and Shooter eat crab legs? I don't want to watch anybody eat anything that close to the screen. That's it. That's the thing. Like, That's you all could, we were saying. You could find a top three list of things that are okay to eat on film, which we talk about that all the time. Corn dog. Yeah, uh, lobster <laughs> corn dog, number one. But she was so goddamn close to the camera. That's she all. was up there, and she had the lights off, and she had this light shining in her face, probably from the laptop or from the, her phone or whatever, and she's sucking down crab legs. I just don't want to see it. That's all. Or That's hear it. it. It was not that deep. No. But here is Bethany Frankel's response. Thanks for talking about it, and yep, you're keeping me relevant. And just watch me. Plus, you seem to be listening closely. XO for watching. I got to throw some respect. Look, say what you want. She got the response. She got us talking about her. She got a lot of views on our video as well of us talking. Yeah. The fact that she leans into it and the fact that she's like, yeah, you're keeping me relevant. Good like, sport. Good sport. We respect that. Yep. Yeah, no shade there. Honestly, I thought and that was actually a good comment. Look, this is how it works, too. If you lean into it and you say something like that, we leave it alone. 100%. Bethany Frankel, you are free and clear. Yep. We get it. You leaned into it. You understand. You're staying relevant, and it worked. So, hey. Just please, for the love of God, eat. stop eating crab legs yeah. that close. And that's if a, I see a lobster tail or something next week, I swear to God. And that's a PSA to everybody. Just don't eat crab or anything in front of the camera that closely. People don't want to see people eat. Period. Yep. Period. But yeah, I thought that's my rose. Okay. Good job. Thanks. Way to go. Anyway, let's move on. But that takes us to Roa, a.k.a. Atlanta, a.k.a. Portugal. We are in Portugal, and it starts out with Kenya and her lackey, Manetta, and they are sitting there chit-chatting about the night before. Miraculously, thank God, Kenya can walk. You know, we it was... <laughs> she was almost paralyzed. <laughs> it was close to for a minute. She slipped and fell, and... It, everybody saw it. She was like two inches away from being paralyzed forever, but she can walk, but they're recapping the night and the LaToya talk. Now, as we find out later, the info's a little messy. We're not entirely sure. Kenya claims that she saw them kiss. We don't know that for sure because there's other claims, but the claim from Drew is the one that says, well, Kenya wasn't even there. I don't trust Drew on this one. I don't. The problem is that it's the unstoppable force meets the immovable object. Oh, wow. I don't yeah. believe either of them. That's a good point. At really, anytime, especially Drew in this situation, just how heated she was getting, I certainly don't believe her because nobody gets that heated when you're. I get you're trying to defend something that happened, but she got absurdly heated and mad at everyone, even her best friends. You could have just let it roll off your back and just move on. Kenya, I just pretty much never believe. She always inserts herself like she was. I'm not, look, I'm not making a joke here, but she probably did something and had to get wheeled away in a stretcher that weekend too. <laughs> like she was probably missing an action or she had to go to bed unreasonably early because she had to get up the next day, whatever happened. She was probably not there. The only person in this situation, the entire situation that I believe is Candy. I, I believe Candy. Because I just don't see Candy lying. I, I, I mean, maybe like here or there, whatever. In the face of other these other women, I just don't ever see her lying. She always stands up for what she saw. She always stands up for what she said. And she doesn't, she never falls back on it. Like she's no. always steadfast in her beliefs and like for that, better or for worse. Yeah. yeah. So I agree with you. I think Candy is the voice of reason here. And again, we are newer to this franchise, but we're almost one season in. And we do understand the dynamics of the group better than especially than we did at the beginning of the season. And yeah, it does seem that Candy is not one to just throw random accusations out there. And this one, she seems very confident about. So I'm leaning towards, yeah, it did happen. But 
moving back to this scene, we find out that Marlo took a video of the entire fight, sent it to LaToya, and then LaToya sent it to Drew. So now we have Marlo being sneaky behind the scenes. There was a comment made later from Mignetta, and this one I had to write down because it's interesting. She said, the cameras were down, so I started filming because that's when the reel comes out. That's breaking the fourth wall, and that's saying, like, yeah, when we're on camera, we're not giving you the full truth. And I thought that was an interesting distinction, and then we get the side view of the actual camera, or sorry, the camera phone and Marlo taping the whole thing. Do you think that was shady behavior? I, look, I... If we're just taking everybody at their word, it's more shady for Marlo to do that because she's sending it to LaToya. Right. But this is kind of where it gets a little murky because we don't really understand the whole backlog of everything that's going on. If Marlo is close to LaToya and you're sitting there talking about this whole thing, I don't really see a problem with that. You've got LaToya's name in your mouth and you're really running this thing up and running this thing up. Maybe. I appreciate the video. that if it wasn't coming from Marlo. Why? Why leave Marlo out of this? Don't you are such a. Weird I don't Marlo understand stand. it. I don't get it. Whatever. What I, I, the issue that I have is the video. If she was texting Latoya, it would be different for me. She's texting Latoya, just saying, "Hey, we're arguing about this. Drew is stuck in the ground right now, saying that you guys did not make out. We're having a huge issue with this whole thing. Can you clear it up? If she's close with Latoya and she wants to reach out to her and say that, sure. That's not what she said. I know. I'm. Creating a hypothetical, well, in which I'm okay hoping. with. I'm saying the video is where I draw the line. Now, with Magneta, I do not fucking believe in any way, shape, or form that Magneta did not send that to somebody else. She says she sent it to Candy. She absolutely sent it to other she people. She definitely sent it to Kenya. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Her, her and Kenya are like this because Kenya orders her and then, around. Well, she, and she admitted to that because she said, yes, the difference is I kept it within the group. I'm saying that Magneta definitely sent that elsewhere. Oh, I could see that. Other yeah. people have seen it because nobody says that's when the reel comes out when the cameras are down and says, I'm going to send it to somebody else who wasn't in the room. You could just tell Ken Kenya the next day. Yeah, that's a good point. Like Kenya's on bed point. rest, but you know. Well, the next scene we get Drew and Sheree talking, and this for me, this is the kind of behavior where I'm like, oh, she's lying. Like where for you, it's like when you see somebody get over animated and over angry yep. about something. When I see somebody over make over making light of something, okay. making light of something over and over again, which is what she was doing. She's talking to Sheree and she's like, this is because of the movie. Like, just ask me if I'm like comfortable with that. Instead, she's like trying to plant the seed, blah, blah, blah. She keeps making jokes and trying to make it seem like so ridiculous and laughable. And when somebody does that at exhaustion, that's when I'm like, oh, this actually happened. You're yeah. trying to be like, ha ha, this is so crazy. Can you believe this, Sheree? Ha ha, Sheree. Ha ha ha, Sheree. Can you believe this? Like, that's when I start to perk up. I'm like, ooh, that's not a great look. When you try to be like the ha ha guy, ha ha girl about it, that usually means you're trying to hide something. And that's the funny thing is it goes to a confessional and Sheree's like, oh, she's lying. We know Drew to be a liar. She's lying. So what I do like about Sheree is in the moment, she's always playing the side of the person. She just sits there and kind of feeds into it to get this person to keep going. Like, that's what she did with Drew. She's just kind of leaning into it a little bit and giving Drew enough length to hang herself because yep. she keeps talking. And then Sheree immediately in the confessional is like, yeah, no, I don't believe her for a second. It's like the Drew Sedora levels of grieving, if you will. Starts off with denial, <laughs> moves into fake humor. Okay. Then we get right into anger at that dinner scene later. What's the fourth? Uh, eventually, she's going to have to get to acceptance, right? Exce oh, okay. But I thought there's five stages of There group. is. There's something in the middle there. We'll figure it out. It's also, it's a different one. We'll it's keep, a makeshift we'll wheel. We'll keep brainstorming. Yeah. In the next scene, we get Mignetta and Kenny again, and they're talking about how Marlo, Candy, and Sheree were talking about Courtney, and they were talking about Drew, and like this whole... When they don't have them actually mic'd up and you just get that like long distance shot and you can just hear the camera audio, I get really confused as to what's happening. I was trying to stay focused, but I really wasn't locked in because they said they're talking about Courtney, but I was like, Courtney is sitting there, no? Mm -hmm. So I was really confused about that. But it does shake out later that we find out that they're kind of warning Drew about her cousin, saying like, your cousin's the snake, you got to be careful. I don't see that. I, I see Courtney defending herself and playing the game and trying to go up against somebody like Kenya, who's an immovable object, as you said earlier. Kenya's hard to go to bat against because she does not budge, right, wrong, or otherwise. She stands firm. So Yeah, I, I there's a lot of things that are going on here. And I, I really I don't think that Kenya likes Courtney. I'm trying all, to clearly. figure out why she doesn't like Courtney. 
between her talking about how when Courtney was touching her, she said that she felt it, it was condescending. It was condescending in Fuck a way. It's like, here. no, it fucking wasn't. Nobody that has that high pitched of a voice is <laughs> condescending when she touches you. Like, no, that's just how she is. But no, that's I, I'm trying to figure it out because it's either one, she's worried that Courtney's getting too close to Drew and she's gonna pull them away. And Kenya likes to have control over the whole situation, especially when Candy's not there. Or maybe she did already see that Courtney's becoming friends with Marlo and Sheree. And uh, I, I just, I, I'm really trying to put my thumb on it because it doesn't make any sense to me. Or she just downright does not like Courtney and she's just going to trash her to her actual cousin. That's what I think. Which is problematic. I think that she believes that Courtney is beneath her. I think that she thinks that Courtney tried to get too comfortable too quickly and she's not on her level. So it's disrespectful now, almost. Do you think that Kenya knew at this point? Did Drew already tell Kenya that? Courtney had said karma is a bitch? I do because her reaction to it later when it came up was, yeah, somebody said that. It wasn't, who said that? It yeah, was, okay. yeah, I know somebody said that, yeah. so like, let's get it out in the okay. open. So yes, I do believe that that was, which is, you know, by Mignetta saying that at the dinner table later, not only is she snitching, not only is she snitching on Drew, she's snitching on Courtney. That's a double snitch. You're yep. a double rat. That's like, you're 0 for 2, which I thought that was a bold move, but that's who Mignetta is. She will go to bat for Kenya no matter what, no matter how bad it makes her look. She will always go to war for Kenya. Well, and that's what weird. sucks, too, because we got a glimpse of Mignetta without Kenya sitting around there the night before when mm -hmm. they were doing all the, the pottery stuff or whatever. She was nice. She was enjoyable. She was getting along with everybody. Yep. And then flip a switch as soon as Kenya comes back. It's annoying. I There's always a hate common that. Common denominator. It doesn't happen. It's not just in Atlanta. It's in every fucking show. There's always one person that's very enjoyable. Usually, it's a friend of very enjoyable without the person that's kind of like handling them, if you will. And as soon as that person comes back in the fold, flip a switch. You're right back to being an asshole. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. But the next scene is the girls all getting on the bus. They're headed to Shooter's favorite. God. Headed to a sound bath, baby. Stupidest fucking And thing. it's not, but the banter leading up to this bus is just hysterical. Kenya's lucky to be walking today. Yep. Lucky to be walking is disrespectful to people that are actually paralyzed. Like, you fucking slipped outside. You're embarrassed. Next That's to a banana is. peel. Which is hysterical. Yes. I'm glad you, like, yes, of course we're glad she's okay. We're not wishing any injury on anybody but let's be real it was not that big of a deal and she's leaning on it like somebody tried to kill her but the diagnosis was trauma mm -hmm. what do you mean it's not trauma not a bruised coccyx which is your tailbone not a hairline fracture not what is it what's the word a contusion even it was just trauma that's the most vague response ever the doctor probably she's saw her and was like her here's some ibuprofen Go back and take a good night's sleep and wake up. You'll be fine in she the She also morning. waited for a couple of hours. I'm sure her ass started to feel better halfway through well, sitting in that waiting in the room. Yeah. Yeah. But this is where we get the first glimpse of Courtney in her confessional. And she's starting to get riled up. She's starting to respond to some of the disrespect that she's getting from Kenya. And I like that. I like that she's not backing down. Courtney has taken about 15 steps forward for me since uh, episode yeah. one. I, I think she solidified herself as a housewife for next year or at least a friend of a friend of for sure because she is not afraid to go to bat and i like that but we get a little freestyle from mignetta and look i'm not here to shame anybody for their passions for what they want to do none of the lyrics rhymed and it bugged the shit out of me it really, really, I did not enjoy it. I was. We talked about this last week because one of the guys that we were going to have on our live show apparently did like freestyles. And I want to like, I want to make them do it like in front of everybody. They're like, fuck no, that sounds really uncomfortable for me. <laughs> but this was uncomfortable for me and apparently it was uncomfortable for you. You want to do that in person? Do you think that asshole on the stage was going to be able to sit up there and freestyle? Yes, I want to hear that. Ugh. I absolutely want to hear god. that because of this moment. I'm like, oh god, like that's, and the worst part was they're like, oh, did you just come up with that? And she's like, no, it's an old one. I'm like, oh, that's, that's recycled material Ugh. like maybe you should have just winged it but they get to the sound bath and shooter shooter has his own opinions about sound baths i think they're lovely i do think that they're centering i think they're grounding i think they're a good way to kind of look inward i don't understand why you're so against are you against a sound bath or are you against watching a sound bath both what's your problem it's, they're stupid why are they stupid they are stupid you're as hell stupid. just because you can't like accept and like relax and just try something new. You I would have a no clue. Thousand percent fall asleep. That's a, that's not a bad thing. 
What do you mean? Because that's part of the... If you fall asleep in a sound bath, that's still meditation. It's bringing you to a place like to relax. It's a relaxed state in which you can... Like, I would fall asleep to make it go faster. You're such a... Get it over with. Are I'm you kidding me? Oh, my God. Case, that's our next thing. We're going to a sound bath together. Case and point that these things do not work. You get the stupid voiceovers where they're all talking about, this is what I reflected on. Love... What the fuck is the... What was the phrase? Love is... Love... Oh, man. It was... I am loving awareness. I, I am, am loving, loving awareness. awareness. That makes no sense. Yes, first it off. does. No, I'm it loving being doesn't. aware in the moment, Ugh, being present, God. presence of mind. Try it sometime. Whatever. Dick. So they're all going and doing their voiceovers. What happens less than an hour later? They get in a fight. Huge fight. <laughs> Clearly, this doesn't fucking work. <laughs> I do not care. It's the stupidest thing in the world. There's no way. I, Kenya cries. Like, come on. It, it, I can't with these things. Well, look. I, look, I, you know what? I'd rather watch a Roaring Twenties party once again for the fucking eighth time this year you've see, I, than do a sound bath again. We're done with them. I would love for one of our listeners to put a compilation together of all the Roaring Twenties parties over the last year and a half of Bravo shows. It's remarkable the amount that we've seen. But I think you're just a Grinch. I think that we need to go to a sound bath together and do a live from it. I think that would be electric. Yeah, but really boring live. Boom. You feel better? No. You're better now for mocking sound baths? No. Meditation? Do not care. Yeah, well, but we get to the last night, and this is where the video conversation comes up, and I did agree here. There is a double standard, because Marlo gets dragged for recording this video, and again, like she took it a step further by involving Latoya. I do understand that that's a little bit different. However, Mignetta doesn't even get a slap on the wrist. Like, no one even says a word about the fact that she filmed the whole thing too. She claims that she stopped recording as soon as somebody said no cameras. I don't know if I believe that either. We don't actually have the video footage, so I don't know, but that just so You're telling me light. that somebody said no cameras and, and Mignetta went, turned it down, but Marlo didn't? That I could believe. I'm just saying I don't believe Mignetta did. I just But that's when we get the comment. That's when the reel comes out. And I don't appreciate when people say things like that because we should be getting the real on the camera. I understand it's played up. I understand that it's not going to be 100% authentic, mm -hmm. but it needs to be close. And the fact like this is when you get that, and it's like when you're watching a movie and something happens in the movie that takes you out of it for like your suspension of disbelief, which is what gets you into, you know, or is it suspension of belief? Suspension of belief. Is a okay, so that's what pulls you out of, you know, a fantasy movie or something where you're, like, really involved in it and then something dumb happens on screen and you snap out of it, like, the trance, and you're like, oh, this is dumb. For me, that's what that does. Like, I don't need that comment. You should be giving us more on screen. But we get Kenya coming at Courtney, and this is when everything kind of blows up. And this is when Kenya comes at Courtney, and we get the word collusion thrown around, which just reminds me of the league, which makes me laugh every time. But yeah. And to Courtney's credit... She stands by. She's like, yeah, I said that. And this is why I like Courtney. She's not backing down from Kenny just because Kenny is like, you're irrelevant to me. I am the moment. That's not trash talk. That's not trash talk. It makes you look self-absorbed, condescending, and just rude. Courtney does not deserve the backlash that she's been getting from Kenya all season, period. So I'm team Courtney here all the way. I think that she deserves to drag Kenya. I'm so glad that she's not afraid to stand up for to her because Kenya deserves to hear this shit. She does, and, and I thought that it was a very funny little throw out there, like, just because you busted your ass. Like, Kenya took offense to it, but I think Kenya took offense to it and tried to double down on the whole, I could have been a paraplegic after that, or whatever <laughs> the fuck she said, because she realized that she was not winning this, and it's got to be so interesting to see, because, look, I, Courtney wasn't in the forefront of our minds. In the beginning of the season, she backed down immediately. Yep. We thought, okay, yeah, maybe she's got a little promise. Nope, she backs down, backs down, backs down. She tried to go after Candy right away. Weird. Didn't work out. Strong she backed move, down. Back down. But all she did was back down, reassess, and then I don't even think that, I really don't even think that she was going to go after Kenya. I think that she was just trying to find her groove with these women. I agree. And then Kenya had backlash at her for some reason, completely lashed out at her just because she was touching her. And again, Courtney looks like a touchy feely kind of person. She probably rubs your shoulders while she talks to you. But don't say that it's in a condescending way. Like, that makes zero sense. It makes zero I, sense. I, that's got to be the first time that anybody's ever claimed that you touched me in a condescending way. I like, agree. I, maybe a pat on the head, like, good job sport that's would be, like, a condescending way. Sure. But I think she was just trying to relate to Kenya. Yeah. And, like, by breaking the touch barrier, it kind of, like, moves the friendship forward a Probably. little bit. And so maybe she was testing the waters. Maybe she overshot her mark a little bit. Sure. Could it have gotten annoying? I could see that. But you know what? But it's not condescending. Overall, I like to see it. Because we're still getting, last week we had that weird little divide where Drew could have gone either way. Well, Drew, we do get to see that Marlo actually has a little bit of backup because 
again, they are still just going after Marlo relentlessly. It's annoying. I'm sorry. Like, I know that I sound like a huge Marlo stan, but at the end of the day, I am mostly just annoyed and pissed off and and I'm bored with it. Stop going after her for fucking every little detail. Stop throwing her life her past transgressions and her legal troubles and shit in her face. I love that she laughs at it now. You gotta have she's to. gotta be done with it. She's gotta be over it. She's gotta be annoyed with it. It's just uninvented. Nobody like she doesn't even bring it up anymore and they still throw it in her face. Like that's the only thing that they have to go after her for. That and selling her pussy for a bag apparently. But that's those are the two things that they keep coming after her for. And I love that she's letting it roll off. I like that Courtney's teaming up. I like that Sonya's getting a couple words in there. Sheree can't even handle it because she has to leave because love is awareness or whatever. It, the whole thing. I looked, am love awareness. I, I was happy to see that at least it wasn't everybody against one person. I agree. There with that. were multiple fights going on, and it involved a lot of the key players. And I like to see that. But to me, it's it's messy because i don't even know if everybody knows who they're standing up for and it's funny because they start to break down we get the juxtaposed scenes and we get kenny and her crew talking about it and kenny's like i didn't say anything to her i haven't done anything to that woman blah 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 you cut her off at every chance you get you're extremely rude to her you're shrill towards her there's no warm feelings at all you make her seem like she's beneath you we watch it week in and week out. And you look at Courtney's side of things, she really hasn't done anything to Kenya that's been negative until finally she got pushed too far. And she's like, yeah, karma's a bitch. Like, wear it. Sorry about it. Yeah. And I don't see anything wrong with that. If you you, you keep pushing, she's going to bite back eventually. But we get to dinner. And first of all, fuck Ralph. And I don't care how you feel about Drew. The fact that it, it actually pains me to see Drew be like, yeah, I'm still in counseling, but Ralph took a breather. And then she still stands by her man. Like, she's loyal to a fault. And this dude's in Vegas right now with a stripper producer doing God knows what and has the balls to text Marlo the next night at the vineyard and be like, keep my name out of your mouth. Like, fuck your name, dude. Fuck you. Seriously, I hope you hear this because you deserve to be dragged all across it's the screen funny by because everybody. When, when Marlo did first say that I just got a text from Ralph, I my immediate reaction was just talk to Drew one on one. You don't have to do this in front of everybody. Yeah. Maybe I'm protecting Marlo, but then when you read the content of the message, sure, throw that out in the front of everybody. Absolutely. What a weird ass move. And I get it. Like Drew was expecting it. She uh, clearly told Ralph. If she didn't, then there's another snake in the grass somewhere. No, I mean, she clearly told. She Ralph. clearly told Ralph. So she was expecting it. I like that Marlo said it in front of everybody because they can now see Ralph for who the fuck he is. And I love her they stance on that. Is, by the way. Exactly. And I love her stance on that. I'm not going to text him back. I'm sitting next to his wife right here. I'm going to say I'm sorry for even bringing him up. She didn't say anything bad about him. Not one iota. She said we do the same thing. We We're do the same thing. We're both in tech. Okay, cool. Period. That's not bad. Unless he's not actually in tech. Maybe he lost his job, too. Maybe that's why he's doing this fucking stripper promotion thing oh. in Vegas. Maybe that's why Drew's so butthurt about this. I don't know. I'm just throwing things out there that like are going that through my theory. mind while I'm watching. But she didn't say one bad thing about him. This is just, it's getting annoying with this show. Marlo does things that aren't even bad, and they're still going after her for it. It's annoying. I think that I, I can agree with you there that it's annoying. I don't like when things get repetitive and uninventive. Like, come up with some new material. We hear the clapbacks. This this crew is great. They're great at insults. They're great at yeah. clapbacks. They have some of the best in the housewives realm. So you can do better than reusing the same material, especially Kenya, man. Like she continues to just that she leans into that one every goddamn time. Every time she's got an issue with Marlo, she throws out the fact that she was potentially a high end escort or yep. something. And it's just it, I agree that part gets old. But I did enjoy the fact that they could at least give Sheree one evening where. Things could have blown up. They reel it in. I love the edit where it slows down everything. They're like, do you feel the wine? There's pilgrims here. <laughs> that was pretty funny, honestly. <laughs> it was. I enjoyed it. I even wrote down fun edit. That was a fun edit. And that's the thing is like, yeah, I'm harping on the one thing that annoys me. But overall. Good episode. It's a good episode. I, I thought it was it. a really good episode. And I think that the end of the season is going to be really good as well. And I think that that reunion should be awesome as long as they don't overdo it. That's the but thing. it should be awesome, and I'll blame Bravo editing for that. I'm not going to blame Atlanta well, Housewives for that. I'm going to br- I'm going to blame Bravo editing for that if they do end up making it longer than it has to be. But overall, enjoying the season. I know that everybody says that it's a down season, but we're happy that we got into Atlanta. Yeah, I think that whether the audience agrees that it was a good season or not, we did enjoy it. And like you said, we're 
I'm pumped that we did get into it. Everyone kept telling us we had to do Atlanta, had to do Atlanta, had to do Atlanta. We missed the boat last year because we started the podcast too late. So for better or worse, we did enjoy this season. We are excited for future seasons. I am excited if, you know, this wasn't the best year ever, if they can shake some things up to try to make it better. I mean, I guess we'll see. And it's the season's not over yet, but yeah, I, I, I've enjoyed Atlanta. Yeah. But that takes us to Roni 2.0, and look, I'm enjoying it. I really am. I think it's fun. I think it's light. I think that I'm happy that there's drama starting now. We're starting to see the tensions rise amongst the group, as you're going to get. Especially, I'm glad that they forced a trip early to make all these women stuck in the same house together, because that's how you produce drama. Yeah. You stick enough people in the same house together for long enough. They're going to butt heads. Yeah. Even if it's early on, and obviously there's still some growing pains, and we know that they don't really all know each other. I will say, as the resident ratings guy, it's not doing super well. Yeah, I did see that. Which is kind of shitty. And look, I mean, we're part of the problem because I watch it on Peacock. But I think, honestly, it doesn't pair super well with Atlanta, if that makes sense, because it's right. It's on the same night as Atlanta. Oh, it is still? Yeah. So it's still on the same night as Atlanta. I think it would make more sense to put it during the week. Like in summer during the week, people will watch things. Sunday night during the you during put it the around like nine hard, o'clock man. on like put it in fucking OC slot. Put it in nine o'clock on Wednesday. That would do much better than a Sunday night. I feel like people are getting back from wherever the hell they were. If they're at the beach or they're at mountains or whatever, it, it's just not a good time slot for them. So I, I'm not going to read into the ratings. I think that a lot of people, the most most people like it. The people that are watching it really enjoy it, which is what I like. I do have a shuffle in the power rankings, though. Oh, let's hear it. Big time shuffle. Oh, I like that. Let's hear it. Uba is now number one. That's not surprising. A thousand percent She's great. She one. is great. Uh, Jenna moves down just a bit, but Erin has now landed her spot just above Jessel at the bottom. Oh. I had Erin up pretty high. She, I know. she jumped right back down. Interesting. Yeah. I, I think you were definitely onto something where. Uh, her and Jenna are not quite as close as no, she would make you but believe. She wants you to think they are. Yes, this is absolutely the Diana Jenkins effect, and that's exactly what's going on here. The rest in the middle Most is pretty much unchanged. I think that that's a reasonable power rankings. I, I like that, and I, Jenna's still great. Uba, God, Uba is great. She's just great, and it's it's not surprising because Chanel was great. You know, Ion is fantastic from Dubai. She was the only bright spot of that entire franchise. Yeah. I do wonder if we weren't, we wouldn't get this much out of Uba if it wasn't for the early trip. I don't because know. Because we'd be getting That's her solo. Obviously, I, I mean, looking at scenes the next week and, and forward from there, it looks like we get a lot of, like, solo stuff with her, which, you know, obviously we want to learn more about pretty much everybody. Um, but I do agree with you. I think that the trip early in the season is huge. Because it forces everybody to get together. You can kind of see how it all works. Um, the only, obviously, dud of the crew is just Jessel complaining about everything. Dude, it's so annoying. She comes downstairs. She complains about the cold. And the heat's broken upstairs, I guess. Then she's like, I'm moving to the hotel. And then she's complaining because Jenna went to her house. But she's not complaining because Jenna left. She's complaining because Jenna's house is on the water. And... Aaron's house is not. And then she's complaining because the Wi-Fi is not working. And everything that she has to complain about, she does. And here's the thing that drives me nuts is later when she's called out about it, she's like, oh, I was just saying that to be funny. It's like, no, you weren't. You were incredibly rude to Jenna the night before. You were incredibly rude to Aaron, who is hosting you at her beautiful Hampton yep. house. I don't care if it's not in the hot spot of the Hamptons. It's the fucking Hamptons, and it's a gorgeous house. The fact that you think it's acceptable to be that rude to your host is just baffling to me. It's fucking insane behavior. I don't understand how you can act like that's not a big deal after you, one, drag Jenna for her lingerie, who her friend made, and she was nice enough to give you a fucking gift, and then Aaron, who invited you into her home and is doing everything she can to provide a fun trip. I just, in my experiences, I cannot imagine going to somebody's house for the weekend and complaining about anything. I don't care if it was freezing cold. Yeah. I'd put on six sweatshirts and not say a goddamn word. No, I mean, honestly, I like to sleep in the freezing cold, so that's entirely I fine by too. me. But I do think, and look, I don't really know, honestly, what or how I'm going to feel about Bryn moving forward, at least like, you know, a season from now or whatever. I feel like she's trying really hard. She is, but that's working for now. Because okay. I feel like if she didn't show up this episode, and it was still just the five of them up there at Aaron's house, Firmly agree. I don't think that we would have gotten as much out of this episode as if 
when Bryn showed up. And obviously Bryn shows up at the trainer. And then later when they're having lunch, she makes a couple of comments in there. I feel like, yes, she is forcing things, which could definitely get annoying. Maybe she learns how to kind of manage that and make it organic, whatever. But it was necessary for this episode. I agree with that. That's a really good analysis there. But Jenna returns to the house and she left the night prior because, quote unquote, the music was right below me. It was 10 o'clock at night. I have a meeting at 6 a.m. I didn't want to bug anybody. I just bounced. Now, I see both sides of this, and that might be because I'm biased towards Jenna, and everybody seems to be slightly biased in her favor. I do agree with the fact that if you are at a house for the weekend, you just got to grin and bear it. You got to muscle through it. You can't I, just bounce. I don't think that she has to just grin and bear it, but you can't just bounce and not plan on saying anything to anybody. That's, just ah. First off, nobody knew that you had a meeting at 630 the next day. They were all surprised to hear that. Tell them up front. Second off, don't leave the house without saying anything. You that were just going to sneak out the front door. That was weird. And look, I, you can chalk it up to her personality. You can say that maybe she doesn't feel... Well, comfortable this, well, or social look, with these women. This is her women. first girls trip ever. I, all right, it's soft spot for Jenna. I'm I'm going to be the contrarian here with this. Shocking. Because everybody's got this huge soft spot for her. I like her. I think she's great. I think she's a super interesting person. Need more out of her. But in this instant, that's a bullshit move. I agree. It was a, a bullshit thousand percent. Move. There's no way to look at the other side of this. No, no, I agree with that. I agree that I just said that she shouldn't. Have, I don't even think or she should have left. You, I, I yeah, that's I, you can be in the middle. You can say like, yeah, I've got a, I've got a meeting at six thirty. I'm probably gonna leave around like ten, ten thirty, but I'll hang out with you guys as I long as I can. To announce and that then I will come back. If, yes, when you absolutely. get to the house, yep. right? Absolutely. Immediately, just make say, that hey. plan immediately because she said that she didn't want to be in everybody's way and this and she that made and whatever. Excuses. She made get, excuses. There were excuses there. Yeah, she definitely made excuses. But I wrote down in my notebook though, finally some drama. Like now we're starting to see people push, but it's funny, and we'll get to this in a minute. But she doesn't really get a lot of heat for it. And we'll get there. But the next scene, we get the personal trainer, David, coming over. And good Lord, the man walked into a shark tank. Oh, yeah. Like, look, beautiful guy. Yeah, well, yeah. A handsome man. He's carved up. He's got he's got it going on. I, I understand. But, like, Uba's all over him immediately. Bryn walks in the house. She's all over him immediately. Like, good thing this man's single. Like, what if he wasn't? Yeah. Could get messy. <laughs> but... We get to see a scene, and Shooter and I always appreciate these scenes because it lets us know if we were going to go golfing in a foursome, who we would pick for our teams. Not the most athletic group. No. Not, not at all. What do you think about Jenna's leggings? I think that she's a fashion Jesus icon. Jesus Christ. Wear. No, no, no. They were I wasn't atrocious. a fan. I wasn't a fan. I wasn't a fan. <laughs> but I love that when Bryn walks in, Uba's like, Jenna just walked, or <clears throat> Uba's like, Bryn just walked in like a pimp, like wearing a big-ass fur coat, and a sweatsuit. Interesting look for the Hamptons, especially when the next scene is them getting all done up to go to lunch, and Aaron and Jenna walk out like, what the fuck, guys? Like, we're going to I lunch. thought the funniest part about them walking out to go to lunch, and obviously they're all dressed up, well, four of the six are dressed up. Did you hear what Cy said? I don't try to slay all the time. Oh, dude, I just, you know, I, wrote it down. I, I had some clothes and I put them on and like, I just like to look good. I, I always look good. 16 it's like, bags. I brought an entire fucking Escalade full of bags and said, I've got every outfit in here so that I can get all of my pictures for my content this weekend. Yeah. You planned on it. Don't act like you didn't. You got to. But Sai is you. my, like that, that part annoyed me. She did rise a little bit because I felt like one, she can take a little bit of shit, which is always good. She seems like she has fun. She seems and to have a good head about her. I think that she's defensive because of her past, and that's understanding. She's been through a lot. She worked her ass off to get where she is. Mad respect for that. No shade whatsoever. I do think she jumps to the defensive very quickly, and I think that she gets a little mean really fast because of that. But again, like she's very proud of where she is now, and I think that she deserves to be because of what she's gone through. She's not my favorite. I, she's not my favorite, but she did move up a bit because she yeah. was pretty rough the first couple episodes. But this is when we get the scene after the workout with Jenna and Aaron. They're chatting inside, and this is where I'm like, okay, and this is confirmation for you that Aaron, one, doesn't know Jenna that well, and two, is going to let her kind of do whatever she wants. I got a different sense from this scene, actually. Oh, I didn't think that she – I don't think that Aaron went that easy on her, honestly. Oh, I did. I, she – do you really like? Uh, in let me comparison well, to when Bryn. Oh, in, in comparison, I'm not even going to compare it to that because that is way different. That is shooting your dog versus you know stepping on the dog's paw. As Jesus Bryn, Christ. that's what Bryn said. Oh, I didn't hear that. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, it's like whoa, dude. <laughs> real dark, real fast. But no, I I thought that Aaron did give 
Jenna not even the appropriate amount of shit. I thought she gave her more shit than she even deserved. She was cold to her when she walked in. She made a lot of comments about her leaving. Didn't even look her in the eye for the first couple of minutes while they were talking. And she made countless jokes about how they did not get to eat breakfast because Jenna said, I'm not going to eat before I work out. Just when and she then Jenna was there. there. Well, f- no, 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 that on, was... Though. No, she at the lunch later in the episode, she kept saying it over and over. And then the rest of the crew jumped in and started saying it over and over again. I think Jenna got the appropriate amount of shit. I don't think so. I think she deserved because here's the difference, right? The difference is when Bryn got shit, it was more pointed. It was definitely meaner. And it was for sure with Jenna. There was there was a there's a caveat in there somewhere that it's it's like it's it's a little lighter. It's like, look, we're going to get through this clearly. We're just going to give you some jabs. But I thought the initial and I I, this is where I kind of agree with Aaron. Now, I don't agree later when she says that I just like Jenna more than you, Bryn. But I do think that Jenna or that Aaron gave Jenna the appropriate amount of shit. And Jenna did apologize within hours. And I get it. Like Bryn didn't say anything to you for a couple of weeks, blah, blah, blah. Bryn probably didn't know that you were pissed at her until, you know, the day before she had to go over to Jenna's. But that being said, I didn't really think that she was playing favorites. I thought that she gave her shit, and I thought that Jenna apologized, and I thought that was it. I liked that. Here's the difference for me, okay? And this one line, I think, is what changes that. In her confessional, she says, we just need to give Jenna her space. Like, she needs to learn how to, like, be in this group, blah, blah, blah. She's giving her the grace. That's true. That I don't think she'd give the rest I of the cast. Yeah, I, I kind of look at confessionals a little differently. Just because they've had weeks and weeks to kind of reflect on things, I look at things in the moment. That's fair. But to the shakshuka of it all, if you don't know what shakshuka is, it's like red sauce with eggs cracked in it. I mean, there's much more to it than that. But that's like the general gist of it. To eat that before a workout is insanity. Oh. It's crazy. No, it's really good. There's a no, lot of No, it sounds of, awful before oh, yeah. a workout. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of herbs in it. There's, there's a lot of like a or ton even just of breakfast. flavor. No, it's a really good. It, it is really good. There's a ton of flavor in it. Will you make it for me sometime? I will. Daddy. I make really good shakshuka. But it's it is really strong and it is heartburn city. Yeah. Because it's all red sauce, egg, fat. Like it it'll crush you. And the fact that you want to eat that before a workout is is just plain crazy. You just don't do that. But this is when they get all dressed up to go to lunch, and this is where we, I wrote it down, the same thing that you said, where it says, Cy doesn't try. You brought 30 bags, bro. Yeah. That's what I wrote yeah. down. About. I'm happy that that didn't go unnoticed. <laughs> no. I hope other people caught that. No, too. no, no. I was like, come on, man. Like, you just got to accept it. Like, that's, you're an influencer. We get it. But you got to be that person always. But they get to lunch, and they start talking about their flirting methods. If I was standing at a party when I was single, and some chick was standing next to me flipping through her nudes, I would walk away immediately. That girl's not stable. I would have thought she was a hooker. <laughs> like, I'm <laughs> not even God. kidding. <laughs> immediately, I just been like, oh, nope, that's a trap. That's an escort. Yep. No, no, no. For me, it's just more so like, no, I'm not going to get involved with that. That's, that's a red flag. That's a big red flag. That's not a good method for me, I don't think. Uba, I thought was funny. She just goes up and asks for directions. And I did enjoy the scene because I love the play on words where Britain's like, yeah, I'm looking for gate B, gate D, and gate E. That big dick energy. Like, yep. the, 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 I like it was this good banter. Once they all yeah, they ate and banter. they weren't hangry anymore, they, they have they banter. had good banter. Yeah. And to their point, like they haven't really eaten a solid meal since they've been at Aaron's house. They had caviar and then they had nothing. Well, they went out to dinner. That's true. No. Yeah, they, they went out to dinner the night. But remember, oh Uba yeah, stole oh the yeah, she milk? stole the coconut yeah. milk and then acted like coconut milk was impossible to find. That was she goes. Yeah, this that's... is really hard to find. I'm like, no, it's not. Just go to the grocery store. It's it's in every grocery store. Yep. Just go to the international food section. It's sitting right Talk there. Talk to Crystal Minkoff. She actually has a whole brand she about does. coconut milk and, and coconut water. Yeah, we made a cocktail shout with her Crystal. over the holidays. I made a mocktail, but shout out Crystal. Can't wait until Beverly Hills is back. But an interesting point here, when Jenna's talking about the fact that, you know, because she dates women, that she doesn't have to worry about these games being played. And I was envious of that because I fucking hate the game. I think the game is so dumb. I can't stand that you have to, like, worry about saying too much or not saying enough or when do you text and this and that. And the fact that Jenna's like, yeah, I don't have to worry about that. She was like, wow, that must be really fucking nice. Yeah. That must be really nice. Yeah, it really must be because that's a terrible part of the game. It's awful. I fucking hate it. But moving on from that, that's when we get the the conversation at the lunch table where there's a double standard, and that's when Aaron's like, well, maybe I just like her more than you, which is 100% true. And after after hearing your point, like, yeah, I don't really see both sides, I guess. I do see that Jenna should have just stuck it out. I, I do have a soft spot for her, so thank you for correcting me. I, I needed to hear it. You're allowed to keep the soft spot. You don't have to patronize me now. I just gave you credit. Leave it at that. Sorry, you're a nice guy. It. Okay, fuck you. But this is when the Jessel comes back up. 
and everything that she's done. And I can't believe that she's sitting there defending herself. And she thinks that she's apologizing. This is where I just don't think she knows. I Not truly once don't did she say the words, knows. I'm sorry, or says, I, I apologize. Get it. Yep. I get it. That's different. Say, I'm sorry, and stop shitting I get shitting where you're on. coming from. Stop shitting about patronizing. On it. Oh, my God. I get she's where you're coming from. Worst. And okay. this is what I said about how she talks to her husband. And we got a scene from next week, by the way, where the yeah. husband tries to check her and say the way that you talk to me sometimes. And I fucking told you. But she's sitting there and she's talking about the lingerie. And she's explaining it to Bryn. Like, yeah, she bought me this thing. And it was really nice. But, like, I looked like a Christmas tree. It was hideous. I would never wear it. But I get it. I get where you're. She keeps insulting it. And that's when she says this. I was being funny about it. Which is the same to me. As when, and you know it's my least favorite trope, when a housewife gets caught in a lie and they say I was joking. Yep. It's the same thing. And Uba chimes in in her confessional. She is talking about, and there might be some merit to this, she thinks that there's some trauma from her IVF journey trying to have children. We can't speak on that, obviously, and I'm yeah. sure that was a really difficult process, and I'm sure that there was a lot of insecurities that come with having a child. Like, it, it does so much damage to your body, to your hormones. It's, I do a lot of postpartum training with, with my clients. And yeah, it, it's a really, really hard hill to climb and respect, seriously. But the way that she talks to these other women and the way that she treats these other women that are doing nice things for her, they invite you to their house. They buy you gifts and you have nothing but complaints about it. It's so rude. I just, I can't, I don't care if you're rich. You still can't just be a dick. The way that she finishes the apology to Jenna is what I should have said is, thanks, I want to exchange it for something else. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, No, man. like, just do what we said last week. Just say thank you. Don't put it on or try it on. Realize that it does, doesn't fit or whatever. Put it back in your bag and never wear it again. That's it. That's it. You don't have to talk about it. Nope. But we get back to the house, and they give Jenna a makeover, and she looks stunning. I will give her that. She looks amazing. The girls did a nice job dressing her up. Really interesting point, though, when Jenna is talking in her confessional, she's like, I used to dress like this when I was trying to attract men. Now I don't dress for other people. I dress for myself. I, I appreciated that line, and that makes a lot of sense. Yep. And that's it's funny that Sai is saying, oh, this will turn heads in a room. Looking like this will turn heads in a room. What Sai doesn't understand, Jenna has, one, the aura, and two, the presence, and three, the reputation she turns heads in a sweater and jeans. She yeah, walks and in I, a room and she commands the room. Yeah, and I think that's fine. And I, I definitely don't fault Sai for that. And maybe I'm starting to understand who Sai is because even Sai walks downstairs and she implements Jenna's lingerie into her outfit. Yeah. I thought that was such a nice, cool move. And I, look, I don't know if she was doing it to throw shade at Jessel because Jessel made a big deal I about it. that was part of it. That's great. Part of it, yes, could be fine. I liked to think that because Jessel made such a big deal about it, and Jenna is, obviously, we're finding out that Jenna's pretty sensitive about these types of mm -hmm. things. Cy did it to make Jenna feel better, not to make Jessel feel like an asshole. She made it look like, look, Jenna, I'm incorporating this into my outfit. You know how I look at my outfits. You know how good I always want to look. Obviously, there's going to be pictures of me. I'm incorporating a gift that you gave me directly into my outfit that speaks louder like than words. That. I like to think it's that. Now, look. I want a, a little weeks, a little asshole sprinkled on A little asshole little sprinkled on, again. like, yes, yes exactly. Sorry. Yes, I think that's entirely fine. But I thought that was a really cool move, and that's actually why Cy moved up a little bit in my power rankings. But they sit down at dinner. It looks immaculate. This was a dinner that I would very much want to be a part of. The plating looks beautiful. The fish looks incredible. These guys did a fantastic job. Funny, on I didn't dinner. even pay attention to the food. Oh, I always do. I, I always pay attention to the food. You could have asked me what they had, and I would have had sushi. no answer. It was, it was a beautiful dinner. It really was. And they all are raving about the food, which is great. Aaron finally gets to chalk up a win. But they go to two truths and a lie. Some of these are really interesting. If I'm going to be entirely honest, I think... Every single one of them threw an additional lie in there. Oh, I do too. I think it was two lies and a truth. I think that maybe, it was, maybe I two and a half lies and a truth. Was, honestly. I think it was just three exacerbations of the truth. Yeah. That's what I think it was. I think it was three things that are like, whoa. And I don't know, I, you know. Although Aaron did call her husband afterwards and say, did I ever tell you that I had sex in a senator's room? Which oh my God. I, and the kids were in the car. The kids were in the car. That was, was really funny. Hysterical. That was hysterical. The last thing that we get is the women at the fire pit. They're trying to get this thing kicked on. When they make fun of Cy for saying throw a match on it, like that's actually the safest thing to do is to get fire to it immediately yep. because the longer it leaks, the more danger you put everybody in. So for them to be like, Cy's going to blow us up. It's like, no, Cy's actually the smart one to try to light it on fire before you guys keep leaking propane everywhere. That's the issue. Or as Bryn says, petrol. Petrol. That, that. Where the fuck did mm, she come from? Did not care for it. Yep. 
did not care for the forced word. I don't ever care for forced words. Just say propane or gas. It's not petrol. It's a very European thing to say. And you're it not from like Europe. That. Yeah. Don't say well, we petrol. don't. I, I don't know where she's from, but I don't think it's Look, Europe. Given she gives the off she gives off the vibes of spent like a semester abroad, abroad and, and comes made back. it her yep. whole personality. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That that I could see. But while they're at the fire pit, I'm really glad we get this scene because we get to learn about Psy. And this for me moved Psy up the power rankings because I was able to kind of peek behind the veil a little bit and see why she ticks the way that she does. And she worked her ass off. Like she worked at Sears when she was 16 or 17, living in a New York apartment with her roommate from high school. Like she worked her ass off and now she's doing very well. She talks about how she used to peek in the windows and daydream about certain things. And now she's living it. And I, I don't care how I end up feeling about her as a character on this show. Like I will never not give her respect for what she's done to get where she is. I think it's awesome. And I love these scenes because it makes it real. It's like, okay, fuck yeah. Like that makes them super relatable. And I feel like anytime and look like we didn't watch a lot of these shows from the beginning. So maybe some of them start off like this, but we need this for every person on the show. It makes you more relatable. If three or four of them talk about their backstory, like Jenna talks about her whole uprising in, in her career and how she rose to the top and everything like that. Even if people aren't at the top of their company, it still makes you relatable because totally. you worked really hard. Sai talks about her rough upbringing and like what she had to do because she didn't grow up rich. We need more of that. As soon as three or four of them do that and the other two are kind of sitting out there, we're just going to assume that you grew up rich and this is how you've always been. Yeah. And that doesn't bode well for the casual Bravo viewer. Like us. I need that all the time. And honestly, when we look at it, we get new housewives almost every year. We definitely get at least one or two housewives a year at this point. We need them to do that. We need to be able to feel what they feel and understand where they came from so that we can like them. And sometimes we'll understand where they came from and we will dislike them even more. But, we'll but that's okay. Them. We'll respect them. We need this for everybody. We can't just sit there and be like, oh, yeah, you know, this is who I am and what I do. And I worked really hard to do that. Like, tell us more. Tell us why. In tell depth. Us how. Yeah, because if you leave it vague, we're going to try to fill in the blanks and it's not yep. going to be pretty. And that's why, you know, I'm curious to see how much further into Bryn's backstory we get because she says that she relates to Sai because she had a similar... Well, it looks like she has a bit of a breakdown next week during Thanksgiving, I guess it is, maybe. Okay, then so maybe we'll get, we'll get like a little bit more, more there. there because we'll get she... some Uba action. So I do think that we'll get everybody. I am a little worried that kind of like Aaron and maybe Jessel kind of like sit on the side. And those are the two that I, I was thinking of that, when I just yeah. said that, that we'll get like four of the six and then those two will stand on the outside and be like, what's your deal? I think what that are you is and that runs the risk of them staying at the bottom of those power rankings. Look, these power rankings are ever fluid. Oh, and just my God. because I stand firm with Jenna right now, it does not mean that she can't fall four spots in one week. Yeah, okay? mine are set in stone. Actually, I'm just gonna I'm gonna ride. <laughs> That's not surprising, <laughs> but it's, look, overall, I enjoy it. I think it's light. I think it's fun. The drama is not crazy yet it's building up i think that more people really need to give the show a shot i think that if you are out on it without trying it i think that's a really bad way to watch tv in my opinion. yeah and i i think it there's no way that this should be doing salt lake city numbers no it really it's it just, better it's than salt so lake. much better than it salt is lake way city. better than salt lake so just give it a shot for the love of god just watch it and just like understand also it's the first season of a new franchise it's going to take a little while for these women to get their feet wet but if you're not watching now you're going to miss out yeah some good stuff it's some good stuff good backstory and you know what in a couple of seasons we're going to be shaming fans for not watching if it takes off yeah then we have all the ammo to come after you so excited to shame fans (laughs) can't wait (laughs) But that takes us to the question portion of the show, so let's dive right in. From Max June, or that Max Jun 3, one of those two. Max, this is for you, pal. Should Atlanta be rebooted? We don't have the backstory to know that yet. We enjoyed this season, but I will say a lot of our listeners and a lot of our commenters do believe that that is the case. Now... I believe that there's too many good characters on that show to completely do a full reboot. What do you think? I, yeah, I think there's too many. Now, the problem is that, obviously, like, Candy's the longest tenured housewife at this point, and she's kind of checked out. Like, we talk about it. I like that we're at least talking about it on the show, too, and people are kind of pointing out the fact that she's not there anymore. It would be hard to move on from Candy, but... If Candy decides that she's got other things going on and she doesn't want to do the show anymore, 
reboot the whole thing. Wow, so it's riding on candy for you. I think so, okay. honestly. All right. Um, yeah, I don't know. From Collins White, which Atlanta <clears throat> from Collins White, which Atlanta housewife is your favorite? Oh wait, which Atlanta wife's house is your favorite? Oh, I don't, I don't know. know. I haven't seen enough of the houses. Yeah, no. Which which Atlanta wife is your favorite? <laughs> just change the yeah, question I'm it. altogether. Yep. Um First of all, the phrasing there is very confusing. You can't say wife's house for housewives. It's very hard to read. Yeah, we're dyslexic. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of leaning towards... I can't say Marlo. I know that everybody wants me to say Marlo. I'm not going to say Marlo. It's okay. Uh, I'm going to say Sheree, actually. Sheree or... This is going to be surprising. Sonia. Sonia doesn't do em- enough for me. I like Sonia. I-, I like her. I think I would like her a lot as a person. I, yeah, on yeah. the TV, it's it's no, different. Yeah, I, I, I just disagree. I like her. Uh, all right, last one because from Christy Jedlicky, we've already said that we're gonna watch Salt Lake. From our boy Los, who missed our show after <laughs> I just read Los's us, question. <laughs> that's a good question. But you missed our show in New York after you said you're gonna be there, so you continue to make me not like you. I'm trying my best, even though I'm always in support of you and shooter shits on you, and yet you stand by shooter. But whatever, dude. From Outdoor Los, how do you explain tomato pie to people outside of Philly? So you know apple pie, right? Yes. That, that, what? Replace it with tomatoes. What the fuck? That is not. That would be awful. That's not That'd it. Really bad. That's the worst. Ex- it's, um, it's pizza without cheese, just red sauce, but the bread is more like a focaccia maybe. I would say so, yeah. yeah focaccia It's got more structure crust. to it so that it doesn't dip when you it pick it up. It doesn't get soggy, and it's like a thick bread. With very good red sauce on top and a ton of Parmesan, like fresh shredded Parm on top. It is a like, I always say it wrong and then Dev makes fun of me. Is it Corpolis or Coropolis? Corpolis. Corpolis. Corpolis makes a fantastic one. Marciano, shout out to them. They make a really, really good one as well. Finding a good tomato pie is amazing. Finding a bad tomato pie is a very sad experience. Yeah, it is. It's, it's really, it's, really What tough. am I doing? Yeah, it's soggy. And the bread. To, oh, I'm. I was actually the one that I was thinking of. There's. It's bread to tomato ratio is way off. The ratio is favor of the bread. The though. ratio is very it's important. Like a light amount of sauce on so top, and you're like, both. what am I eating? If you go too far to bread, yeah, it's agreed. Bad. If you go too far to tomato, it's yeah, bad. I can't, it's gotta I can't be perfect. Take a bite in and then immediately hit my teeth. Yeah, I need to be able to get some bread in there. Somewhere, I agree. So, so that's a tomato pie is. Amazing. Just make sure you go to a good just get corpolis. It's it's fucking amazing. Or if you're by Marciano's, get a Marciano's tomato pie. But other than that, do you got anything else? No, I do not. Well, remember to follow us on our socials at Brav underscore bros. Follow us on threads, I guess, as well now. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel at Brav underscore bros. And hey, if you're feeling up for it, one. Leave us a five-star review. It helps us out tremendously. It takes no time at all. Just click that little five-star button, write a little blurb about us on there. Really gets me going. Irrelevant. But the other thing is we are on Cameo, so if you want to get a little shout-out on Cameo, have us shout-out you or convince your significant other to become a Brav Bro themselves. We are happy to do so. Other than that, anything else? Nope. All right, keep reading your prayers. Brav Bros are out of here. Later. Bye.